What the hell is this place anyway? We're like an urban explorer YouTube video now. I started watching this YouTuber uh, called Vagrant Holiday. And he just kind of like goes around places and like sleeps in the woods or like in secret closets. Very bold, I guess. But I don't know the legal ramifications, I'm not gonna lie. If I'm gonna make shotgun shells, I'm only gonna use big gunpowders to do it, so we might as well make us some more handgun bullets while we're thinking about it. I don't believe I need any of these plot items in my inventory at the exact moment. We're just gonna be dealing with dog-based shenanigans. I do want to bring the shotgun for dealing with that one zombie in that morgue room and that one dog that jumps over you. In fact, I have exactly two shotgun shells to do with. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I forgot. Sometimes I keep shotgun shells at home in a box. We'll pop over here. Say hey to Ben Botticelli. We've got the three shot burst around the time you would normally get it in the uh, regular game. That does help when uh, fighting dogs by moonlight. Winning love by daylight that you're on your own. Do we just go ahead and blow his head off? It's a good thing. It's what the pros would do. Hey y'all. Just sleeping off a night in the pokey, huh? It won't let you melee through the bar. All of these zombies have like one HP, I think. Yeah. I think in my initial playthrough I did with Tommy for the channel, it's the first time I played the game, I think I may have wasted some Magnum bullets blowing those motherfuckers away. Oh, Ben Botticelli. Good God. I forgot how unpleasant his body looks. His role, he already didn't have a very particularly large role in the original RE2, but in this one, damn. Technically, he is in one of the Ghost Survivor, but they're not canon. Apparently, he's the husband uh, for that. You know that girl, the mayor's daughter, that Brian Irons is taxidermying because he's a nut? Well, apparently her and uh, Ben Botticelli are good friends. I guess he knows Ada's boyfriend, John. The whole my boyfriend, John, who works at Umbrella thing. I haven't listened to this game's dialogue in so long. Is that... I don't think that's still a plot point. Ada just lies about being part of the FBI. As if that were something to be proud of. Okay. This guy. I don't think he'll stand up. Initially. No, he wasn't good. Boom. All right, see what our red herb is. Son, just what I needed. Just when I needed it. Oh, that pissed him off? Really? Huh, that's crazy. But like he's trapped in the wall? Real interesting. Now, but I gotta examine the item. I assume he'll grab us if we get too close. We can hurt him, at least. Kind of shit you can only get in a uh, first-person mod randomizer. Okay, good. He fell down. Johnny Cage finally got a hold of him. Been blowing up his pager all day. But finally, he got a hold of him and let him know to fall down. You were guarding a uh, regular gunpowder. Good for you. Alright, we should have plucked this place clean while I say that. Oh, I forgot he startled us so much. We didn't get to check Flashbang Coon here in the corner. Flashbang Coon always sits in the back corner next to the window in class. So you know he's the main character. Or the main character's love interest. Hell yeah! We fully kitted out our Matilda. She can go full waltzing. The squatter mounted on his thoroughbred and the troopers one, two, three. I'll never fucking know I hit him, boys. Oh, we should probably actually turn power on while we're here. 
Okay. Bob, I was going to say, I was talking about this basement music is fairly intimidating, but the original Resident Evil basement music is also intimidating. Even the farts, the clowns farting in trombone version from uh, Dual, Ma Dual Shock uh, isn't like creepy in its own way, really. When divorced of all context and just listening to it in a YouTube video, like, yeah, it sounds pretty dopey. But the first time I played Resident Evil 1 was actually the Dual Shock version, and I found that basement music somewhat creepy because I was already on fucking edge. So, you know, just context. It's like the AI kernel at the end of Metal Gear Solid 2 said. They gotta create context. Hey, buddy. Alright, I just got one vent boy to deal with. Oh, vent boy! Vent boy! I'm gonna triple shot you in the ass, vent boy. What are you gonna do about it? Uh, the three dogs will now be out there in the car garage. Which is kind of redundant when you think when I say it out loud. Luckily, we can check the diamond key room uh, without worry. Because we already took care of that crowd. And what did we find? A cannon red herb. Always good. A hand grenade. All we need now are horseshoes, and we can be fairly close. Is it close? No, it's almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, right? And that is that one thing. That hand grenade is perfectly timed to deal with this crowd that spawns it in this damn hallway, right here. I always recommend saving a hand grenade for them. Hey y'all, Merry fucking Christmas. <laughs> you earned it. It won't always incapacitate them uh, permanently, so make sure you take their legs to... Who in here ain't dead? I knew it. I knew it was at least one of y'all. This man is real tenacious. He's just withstanding all of my knife blades. Cool. Perfect timing. Alright, now that crowd's been uh, humbled, we'll say. Yeah, you're real fucking intimidating, buddy. How long would it take a human who has no regard for its own well-being uh, like bashing against a window <laughs> to go through it? I guess it depends on how secure the window is. Here we just let that shit walk over. You know, you know what that is? Whoever sleeps on that bed, it was like, it's fucking hot in here all the time. And even with the AC turned on, like it didn't get good airflow. So he just grabbed the hose and has it blow directly on him. Mr. Freeze would be so proud. He would be such good friends with that guy until the guy let slip that he has a wife who isn't being for fro who isn't stuck in permanent cryostasis due to an incurable illness and then he gets real pissy he's like i'm sorry i thought we had something in common now i'm going to shoot you with my ice gun it was very ice to meet you the large gear colonel i seem to have found a plot item that's a large gear snake you can use it to make stairs come down in the clock tower Ugh, clock tower stairs. Hope I don't run into any scissor men. Okay. I think we just need to be shotgun Betty for a little while. Bam, bam. Okay, what do we want to do? We want to bring you and you, because we're going to go downstairs as well. Uh, which means we don't need this right this second. That's a responsible puzzle solving inventory. Well, not really puzzle. We're using an item on another item to make like a door appear or another item appear. Like counts as a puzzle. I still wonder if these are like interchangeable. But I, once again, I don't want to risk the game crashing from trying something out. Hey, Elliot. 
I thought for sure he'd grab me when I couldn't see my legs and what the hell I was doing. Elliot's uh, real tenacious, probably because he very recently became a zombie. I guess having your legs tore off uh, doesn't deter your overall zombiness. It's a powerful lesson when you think about it. And his bulletproof vest, I assume he was the inspiration for the armored zombies that you encounter in one of the Ghost Survivor scenarios. All right, there could be zombies down here because we left a door unboarded, so be cautious. Might be somewhat tense for just a moment. Yeah, let's we'll just ignore him. If you see a zombie standing next to an open window, <laughs> the responsible thing to do is to just ignore them. Maybe they'll go away. Not going to trigger Mr. X just yet, although we can't complete the clock tower before we trigger Mr. X or I believe it'll crash the game, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Luckily, we've activated that nice shortcut upstairs, and once we crank this uh, hallway open, we'll have pretty much complete access all over the RPD. It's a good thing. I really would like to get a hold of the heart key sometime soon. We might have to jump rope for the heart key. Like in Final Fantasy IX. That damn jump rope minigame in Final Fantasy IX. If you're playing it on PC, just use a third party program to get it. Because it's horse shit. I've already been down here once, but... You, so you had your chance to bust through that window earlier. I should be allowed to jump over here now. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping like hell one of these would be the heart key. Nope. It's not required to beat Leon's game to have the heart key, but it does give you access to a few more items. And I guess... Now, then again, maybe the heart key doesn't spawn because... I don't have the the weapon shuffler turned on. You'll notice I haven't been finding any of uh, like Claire's weapons. So, uh, that's a sign. That's what lets you know that I've, I'm only going to find Leon's weapons. That's what, another reason why I, I hope the Magnum isn't at the very end of the game. Although, with just this pistol and the shotgun and the knives we have, we really wouldn't have too much of an issue just playing through the rest of the game. All right, once we climb down here, we can't get back up. Ladder breaks for Leon. Uh, doesn't break for Claire. You know, I'm not saying she has, you know, intrinsic easier time. It's kind of like how in Resident Evil 1, when you play the female character, you have a stand in the form of Barry Burton. Early shotgun. He'll torch Plant 42. I know what you're thinking, but in Chris's game, Rebecca can make V-Jolt. Like, wow, she slightly weakened Plant 42. I still have to fucking shoot and or knife the damn thing to death. No bazooka either, by the way, when you're Chris Redfield. Six item slots. It's rough, I'm telling you. I don't think you're completely dead. Uh, maybe I was wrong. I assume this doorway they bust through is a reference to the fact that this building is in the original game. And if you try to go through the second door inside of it, uh, you get zombies appearing during the transition screen. And it's real startling. Small gear. Not going to bore you with any codec calls based on the small gear. But you get the gist of it, I'm sure. Oh, wow, thanks. The round handle. What a useful item to find. Okay, so what do we need to actually do? We need to, get to go solve the clock tower puzzle. So let's trigger Mr. X. God, I just realized hearing him waffle stomping around in first person is probably going to be even more unsettling. If only I didn't play the game with a pair of headphones on with only one ear covered and the volume substantially lowered. 
because I'm recording myself. And once again, my voice sounds too weird when I have both ears covered. All right, we're going to try the trick where you just make him go away. So we're going to proc him and slowly and calmly walk away. And sometimes he won't even have noticed you and he'll just leave. Yeah, I heard his footsteps moving away. Of course, it might be scarier than that because now we don't really know where you went. We'll just walk around trepidatiously. How's that sound? As long as we don't run a lot and shoot guns a lot, he won't like aggro onto us as easily. Oh god, I hear waffle stomping. I don't know where it's coming from. Once again, I'm thinking this might have been the bad idea. At least if we'd let him see us, we could have run around him and just had him chasing us so we know where he is. See, I don't want to walk in there. What if he's in there? We need to get to an item box, grab both of the gears, and then head to the clock tower. All right, in big environments like this, I'm not as worried because you can see him coming from a distance. Oh no, I'm hearing the Mr. X music. Did he notice me? Okay, it's gone now. There was a Mr. X here. It's gone now. You know, his name is not officially Mr. X. He's just the tyrant. Mr. X, I think, is the name, uh, I want to say Casey Lowe is responsible for him having that fan name because of the Versus Books Player's Guide. Or maybe it was the other Player's Guide. What the hell do I know? Well, you think I am some kind of Resident Evil expert? Okay, we've got a lot of things we want to do. But he is waffle stomping around bothering us. So, we need to plan our route out of where we're going to go. Let's go over and place that and unlock all that stuff over on the left side. Oh no, I'm hearing Mr. X music, am I? Oh god! <laughs> I wasn't startled. Were you startled, kids at home? Not you, Uncle Tenfe. Nerves of steel. Yeah, I'm a little bit more intimidated than I normally would be. I'm not going to lie. All right, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to walk go in here. Start walking because that liquor is in here now. We're going to go ahead and use up the diamond key. But if we go in that little laundry room, he's going to follow us in there. And it's not going to be a good time. But as long as we walk nice and calm, we should make it to the star's office in time before he can get us. Of course, that liquor doesn't actually attack you this first time. He has to do his little jump scare for when you come through that door. Oh god, can Mr. X walk through the steamy? I assume the steam, he would just no clip through it. Like, I, I doubt he'll even acknowledge it. So, I realize we can't actually go that way. Because <laughs> we sequence broke to get in here. We'll just hang out and play with the cool stuff on Wesker's desk while we wait. His cool books. You know, every one of them books has a secret medallion or some shit in it that solves a puzzle. Are you out here, buddy? I did that liquor thing. Did he actually move now, even though we didn't see his initial jump scare? Yeah, he's around this corner, ain't he? Yep, yep, yep. We're just going to ignore him. Ignore the haters and the liquors. Okay, there was six handgun bullets in here. What a treasure. Calmly walk into this room. If Mr. X was standing right there, boys, I don't know what I would do. I'd be worried, I ain't gonna lie. He's gotta be over there, walking up and down the stairs and shit, probably. Alright, that liquor's in here. 
Nope. <laughs> Not worth dealing with right now. I'm running in the library. I hear him coming to fuck a tattle on me. He's running to get a teacher. Mr. X always reminds the teacher that they forgot to give you homework. You know he does. Alright, good. He's not out here. I keep expecting every time I walk through a door to just see his fist coming. I'm not gonna lie. It'll startle me. Alright, I'd ideally like to go through here. Slap this last key in the locker uh, terminal. Now there is a liquor out here, so do not run. Hey, buddy. Boom. I always do that wrong. 203, enter. 103. Rocket launcher? I wouldn't scoff at it right about now. Just saying. The Magnum wouldn't hurt me neither. Oh lord, where could he be? We're in a dangerous scenario because if we encounter him out here, we can't run. Because there's a fucking liquor. Oh no, I hear him. Where could he be? Please don't be behind me. Please don't be in front of me. Just get to the safe room and we'll be okay. Running. I'm not worried. Get in there! <laughs> Oh, God, he was right there. Ah, uh, you weren't scared of the kids at home, were you? Be like your Uncle Tenfei and just lie. All right. I'm worried I'm going to crash the game, so we are going to save again. All right, now I'm not as worried about fucking up, because we have a good save point. I want to go up there and use that up, just to do it. Uh, I don't have the bomb for this thing. I do have the arm with book, though. So I do eventually want to use that as well. When I use these, they'll both leave my inventory and I'll gain one item. So I should have enough room to carry all this shit around with me. Hell, we might not get the little battery for that gadget until the sewers. Because, I mean, we do come back here later. What a contrast of that relaxing, yet startled, relaxing yet uneasing Resident Evil 2 save room music, if that makes sense. I wonder where he went. Anyone out here? Okay, I directly hear his footsteps, but I don't know what floor he's on. First person does make it tenser. It's not a uh, placebo effect. Of course I say that, but I mean, some people it might not affect them at all. They're like, yeah, I eat first person view for breakfast. All right, now that we can walk through here, I'm not as worried because if we need to get away from him, we have another path. He must be somewhat aware of us because I'm hearing the tyrant music. I think he might be coming the other way down this hallway. What in God's name? Maybe not. Anybody out here? Nope. Good. Ha <laughs> ha. Not even close. Okay, these two zombies will have spawned up here, but I was about to say, please tell me I brought the shotgun. When putting together a basic survival pack, always include a shotgun. Hey, guys. Oh, no! Somebody got real uh, ambitious and fucking came at us. 
Give me that, you nut. It plays the RPD hallway music out here too, even though it's much less soothing. Yeah, I see you fucking coming. Nobody's impressed. Go ahead and slap the little gear in here. Oh god. Such glottal air directly into the microphone. Boards are nice sometimes. I don't really need any more. <laughs> but not a bad thing to find. Alright, this other box electronic part should be canon. I believe like the spade key, the randomizer spawns it in its canon location to prevent uh, lockups. To prevent you from getting in a lockjaw. Yep. Alright, I just want to slap this statue arm on that statue. Then we can head down to the basement. Alright, which way did he go? I like when you can see him down there from up here, like your original bubs. Okay. Oh, we get to use our uh, chase breaker I talked about earlier. Mr. X's hate it when you fall through the floor because they're not allowed to. They can bust through walls, though. So, they've got their own things that make them special. He's still mad. The he-mad music's still playing. He's got to walk all the way around and either climb down that ladder or walk all the way around to the steps. So we should have more than enough time to run in there and slap this uh, arm in the statue and get whatever the hell item is on the statue. We're statue locked. We need the Pegasus boots and the bow and then we'll be in go mode, baby. What you got for me, old man Methuselah? Statue hand, Johnny. King, here, take this shit. He's got a lot of names. Oh, man, that gets us two more items. But we already know Mr. X is out here and that he's mad. Well, if we trigger the sequence where Ada crashes a fucking truck into him, he won't bother us anymore. And we can go back into the RPD. We don't just have to follow Ada. So that's what we'll do. Fuck it, I got these boards in my inventory. Let's go board this window up. I forgot you're here and ready to fall through. Alright, that's all I wanted was to hear the sound of his fucking legs disconnecting from his body. Okay, the zombies are going to bust through this uh, hallway. But we don't have any reason to come back through here, so we're good. We're gonna pop in this safe room because we need something to take care of the damn dogs uh, in the garage and this shotgun with three shells in it probably ain't gonna cut it, unfortunately. Much as I hate to say it, this might be a Matilda situation. Now I'm scared to make more handgun bullets <laughs> because we don't know Oh yeah, don't forget we're going to need uh, grenades to get past uh, the zombie shit coming up. Alright. Is that enough bullet? If we don't miss a lot, that's more than enough bullets to take care of those dogs out there. So let's just hope we can pull that off. You crowd just hang out here. I ain't got nothing to do with you. I don't believe Mr. X or the zombies can follow you uh, down here into the basement, fortunately. Cold drinks. The ghost of Tommy give me strength. It's nice to be able to pick them off from this door, but you've got to like aggro them first. Cool. There's one. 
Come on, fatties. I'm your friend. Hey, guy. He's going to get me because he's going to move around radically. I knew it. Damn it! Can't believe I've missed the second volley. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Leon agrees. Damn. Okay, good. I'm just gonna kill the last one with a shotgun shell if I can. Come on, buddy. Calm down. All right, good. Went surprisingly better than expected, honestly. Let's go ahead and get these damn things out of the box. Brian Irons is like, no, the resale value. I'm like, those shitty boxes would barely increase the value of them. Those things ain't cherry. You ain't gonna get that thing graded. Everyone regrets throwing away their Aegis Cube conductor boxes they had from when they were a kid. When they grow up and try to buy some more on eBay. But you ain't gonna get this shit, man. Just get a repo. I'm always real bad at remembering how to do this. Well, somewhat real bad. Good stand to be my bit better at it, I suppose. What would you hide behind? Hell yeah! He's like, even if I'm trapped in prison, I'm still the king. Hell to the king, baby. Cool, we can go investigate the Star's office now. Thankfully, the parking permit also spawns cannonly, because I'm sure that would seek us break the dog shit out of the game otherwise. All right, you crowd. Hey, Mr. X. Here, I have a flashbang. Oh, yeah, I forgot he uh, sometimes punches wildly even when he's flashbang because he's a cheating bastard. Hey, guys. Here you go. You earned it. Get the hell out of my way. I just realized the zombies that busted in the uh, eastern hallway, we are going to have to go buy them again if we want to go back into the RPD. Might just use a grenade on them. Like an adult. Alright. I'm going to check that herb right there just in case it's shotgun shells or a big gunpowder. And then we're going to go check the stuff in here that we couldn't get to before. Because knowing our luck, it'll be some shit we need in the sewers. We're getting that dramatic, I'm hurt, wavy cam, we'll call it. Hey, y'all. I was making sure there weren't one, like, right there that I didn't notice. Come on, buddy. What you doing? Getting shot in the fucking head with a shotgun, but not having your head explode. I get you. That's real cool and all. Oh, God. Your friend's here? No, he bit me from behind, even though I had the camera pointed the other way because it was first person. That's the secret cap. I'm always first person. All right, good. We humbled him. Where are you at over here? You're dressed real nice. Are you the only zombie that has that nice striped shirt on? I don't recognize that model. I don't usually come back to fight those guys. All right, cool. So let's see. What are all the things we want right now? The Hiding Places film. That, 
uh, I thought, for some reason, I thought we had the ornate box that goes in, so we'd get the stars badge. But I realize now that we don't, so this is going to be quite a bit of backtracking for three items in the long run. I say it's worth it. Tell you what I'm going to do, just for y'all. I'm going to bring a heal with me, and uh, we'll kill some liquors along the way. Just for fun. I'm Leon Kennedy and I cut liquors for fun. Oh no, I turned the light off. It's a good thing there weren't a mirror in there. Bloody Mary would have been fucking rubbing her hands together, licking her lips. We could confidently stride through this office now that we've boarded that window up. We did leave a crawling zombie, I just realized as I said it. I would have seen him in third person too. Son. He got his revenge. The only reason I didn't finish him off last time was I heard the Mr. X Bad Intentions theme playing, so I knew that he was aware of our presence. Talk about a tag team duo. There was a cannon green herb in the Fat Chubbs closet, I believe. Talk about perfect timing. Cool. All right, the first liquor we're going to hunt is this one out here. The hardest part of this uh, first person mod is just walking through the damn doors. All right, let's calmly walk out here. Where is he? Ah, oh, there he is, in his natural environment, being a huge asshole. Alright, oh, I, I didn't realize that we've got a weird new camera angle we're not used to, so... We might not keep him stun locked properly. This is why I brought a fucking full heal with me, boys. Come on, you've got to be fucking close to dad. Well, enjoy a knife shoved in you, loser. I'll say I didn't need, I don't think these three bullets was it was it actually enough to kill him damn talk about perfect use of resources son I tell you planned it all out like an opera okay let's develop this film I mean, it's no Rebecca Chambers in a RPD basketball uniform, but what can you do? All right, we pop up to Wesker's desk, find his secret stash of Weathers originals. His bag of Jolly Ranchers that he hides in the bottom cabinet, the bottom drawer. I only eat all the green apples to... And if he tries to say anything, if he's like, all the green apple ones are missing, everybody's just like, uh -huh, sure. Roll their eyes. <laughs> it's the perfect guy. You heard me that one little bit I ran in here and he got mad. Handgun bullets, red herb. Wow, Wesker. What a treasure trove. What a bounty. All right, where are you at? Over there. Good. The moment I get around this corner, I'm thinking of just fucking hauling ass for dramatic effect. Do you think I can make it? He's doing it, boys. I may, may have not heard me. The dramatic effect may have been slightly dulled by the fact that there was no horrible monster chasing me. I apologize. Alright. Pop into the press room. Check the press room drawer. And then we can actually advance to the sewers. The next chapter in our randomizer lives. How long have I been playing? Hour 41. I'm probably going to divide this up into parts like I did in my last randomizer. Just so it's not one giant fucking five hour file. For the most part, I let y'all decide your own view time lengths on 10 Fave videos. It's probably not the smartest way to do it as far as like YouTube statistics and algorithms. But, uh... 
you know, if you just want to watch a half hour at a time, son, you're free to do it. I suppose I could upload a 10, <laughs> 10 minute and one second video every day. Like back when uh, with 10 minute 10 face, son. That was the joke. JPEG. I don't know how this is going to play out. I assume we're running from the crocodile slash alligator uh, segment that, you know, honestly, don't know what to think. If it's going to use first person or not. Ugh, do I want to use our last ink ribbon in case I fuck it up? Hmm. I mean, we could find another one down there when we're walking with Ada. Why risk it? Once again, we're the, the ink ribbons are the actual, like, scarce resource they're supposed to be. The problem when you play a canon Resident Evil is, yeah, you have limited saves, but they give you a shitload of them. Same thing with, like, ammo. It's the curse of being too good at Resident Evil. Does my... Sh I guess I don't have a head on my shadow, I just realized. Since... I assume the mod makes your head not spawn so that the camera wouldn't just be showing, like, the inside of your teeth and eyeballs. Horror cam, they call it. Ada's been standing here in the rain listening to that tape recorder this whole time, by the way. Don't worry, Ada. It was just some hang bullets and a red herb. You didn't miss much. Ben didn't come through. Well, what exactly are you looking That's me when she was watching the my uh, no save no item box Leon A hardcore hunk mod playthrough. She's like, unfortunately, Ben shat the bed right at the end. Roads out. Going through that gun shop looks like the only way. The game, by the way, I'm still holding the aim button. The the game just doesn't let you. Aim at NPCs. Ada's picking the shit out of that lock, son. She'd make a good Khajiit. Just saying if somebody wants to make an Ada Wong Khajiit mod. You'll have my endorsement. Well, cannon ass hand grenade. The bishop plug. Remember, don't fuck up the plugs and the sewers. Whoop! <laughs> Our only visage of Robert Kendo in these playthroughs is just watching him scoot around that corner. Spoilers, he's one of the ghost survivors. Oh, I haven't even thought about playing the bonus modes in first person. God, I bet Hunk scenario, while well, I'm really thrown off by my headless shadow. Um, Hunk scenario must be intense with this first person mod. I was tempted to use that hunk mod in this playthrough too, but figure y'all might be getting tired of it. Of course, we're only seeing Leon's hands. So I like that by using his cannon outfit and it changing throughout the uh, video, we're getting different hands. Like after this Ada segment, Leon takes off the like long sleeve undershirt. So we should get to see some juicy Leon Kennedy forearms. Just saying. Sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Welcome to corporate America. Umbrella's controlled. Son, scathing commentary. Jesus. That nerd Umbrella is probably would have a fairly easy time covering shit up with all the money they have for some reason. I guess I guess all of their money. Cause I mean, how much money do they make with their bioweapons research considering everything they do just gets like <laughs> everybody killed? So, I don't know. I guess their actual pharmaceutical branch probably makes so much money. I guess when you're selling, when you're getting everybody addicted to opioids and selling insulin at like a 4,000% markup, you tend to make money. Who knows? They can't fucking stop giving me shotgun shells. I'm going to be spoiled for the sewers if I could just find that damn long barrel. Alright, the pattern's left, right, left, but I'm thinking that we're going to see this sequence from the normal perspective of seeing Leon run towards the camera like Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. I wonder how hard it would be to mod 
where you're like looking from Leon's point of view here. Because, I mean, it's not like the area is not rendered in front of us. At least I'm pretty sure it is. That classic alligator fight music. Oh, God. Oh, no, I was disoriented <laughs> temporarily by the perspective. Where's my free grenade? That we keep down here in the trash. Chew on that. You overgrown son of a bitch. Where is my free grenade that we keep in the trash? There it is. Or red herb, as we say. Like how Ada just takes a nice casual walk over here. Why didn't y'all just do this to start with? She must have picked another lock or something real quick. Her Khajiit nature once again kicked in. I'm just imagining her as the stripy tail thief Khajiit from that Skyrim lockpick animation that I'm sure you kids have seen. You said the virus turned people into monsters, not reptiles. Fair point. I'm just impressed you made it in one piece. You have to wait for Ada anyway, so I figured y'all would appreciate Ada Cam. So it's time for awkward elevator ride with Ada Wong simulator. It's probably even more awkward because we smell like poo water. Crud vapors. So let me get this straight. Umbrella sells monsters like that to who? Our military? Somebody else's? They don't sell the monsters. They sell the viruses that make them. And Annette is who makes the viruses. Scary as that alligator was, Annette is far more dangerous. Trying to see. If I can get like a cool shot. I don't know what I'm going to make the thumbnail for these. I should have modded Leon to be Tifa Lockhart. <laughs> and then it wouldn't be hard to figure out. Oh, I didn't even think about that we play as Ada Wong. Oh no. How am I supposed to see if I dropped a nickel? With these moderately sized titties. And also the inside of my character model. Okay. Secret weapon time. It's secret weapon time. I already said that. Turn the power on first, stupid. Boom. From a baby. Trying to give y'all adequate <laughs> cleavage cam as I climb, but without showing. The hollow void inside. Appreciate the big juicy cockroaches as an homage to original Resident Evil 2. And I also appreciate that they don't kill you. I think it's a lot. If you get four of them hung on you in the original game, you just immediately die. It's only really a problem when you're playing a Sherry Birkin. Of course, a lot of things are... Only problem when you play a Sherry Birkin, like dogs, for instance. Layla guided us and got that man on his knees. I am going to grab this file for no reason. We should get the flamethrower here. That's usually how this ran. I think, yeah, I think the randomizer always spawns this set of items for Ada in the same places. Which I appreciate. Fat Chubbs is going to get fucking lit up, boys. Hey, Fat Chubbs! Ah, fat chubs. I hardly knew thee. There, but for the grace of God, goes fat chubs. I'm going to preemptively burn this lady up, because she always comes walking after you. The library bunch lady. I don't think she's the same as fat chubs in that her spirit moves from avatar to avatar. I think she's more like the fucking Tim Curry clown from It. Pennywise, I believe they refer to him as. Just use it all up. It don't fucking matter. <laughs> Go over here and get our grenade mats. There's actually a zombie here that I never interact with. You would only really run into him if you didn't know what you were doing. So let's go blow him up with a hand grenade. 
for fun. I believe he's over here. If you take a direct right where you encounter fat chubs, I think you run into a... Yeah. It's an additional fat chubs. And he's additionally blown the hell up. Man, this game needed an extreme battle mode where you could play as like Ada and all the characters. I bet they could have made like a net, a playable character. They could have given her a handgun and like the grenade launcher. You know, kind of reminiscent of that little gun she shoots William with that like she covers, shoots juice at him. And William's not really all that impressed. He kind of shrugs it off. It may, always makes me think of the capsule shooter that uh, George gets in File 2 of Resident Evil Outbreak. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my anti-tank gal. Boom! I sent him a kiss by wire. And I guarantee his heart's on fire. During a regular playthrough, I always imagine Mr. X is like one step away from getting you when you jump through there. But in Randomizer, when you blow him up with a rocket launcher, I feel like it's not quite as tense. Thanks for the file. Oh no, Ada's creepy uh, Japanese horror story hair. We get to do first person not getting burned to death in a furnace gameplay. Bravo. Shut up, Annette. Nobody's impressed. What virus did you invent, by the way? She's like, oh, I invented the G virus. I'm like, I believe right here on the patent it says one Billy B. William Birkin. She's like, oh, hell. I'm like, uh huh. Just stay calm there in this puzzle, kids, and you'll solve it every time. I can only imagine how unnecessarily panicked I was during my initial playthrough. And you can too, if you go watch 10 Infinity Resident Evil 2. It's a good time. That bitch knows what she's doing. <laughs> Damn. I think this is one of those blue cubes. Yeah. I wonder why those started appearing in like this version of the randomizer. The Powell cubes, we call them. They're part of a, a real world ARG. I like to think. I never think about it, but we're above that room. Uh, like there's the where the T valve handle normally is, and there's the sewage treatment room. It's just one of those things I never really think about. Also, we're hearing that classic Dead Factory music. <sighs> Leon's a sleepy boy when he gets shot. He gets cranky. If Leon gets shot in the shoulder and doesn't have a nap immediately afterwards, he'll be cranky all afternoon, son. Fussy. Good luck getting him to eat his vegetables at that point. Even making up stories about the shotgun fairy won't be enough to get him to eat his vegetables when he's being that fussy. I want you... Uh, I really want that flamethrower to appear before we've got to deal with too many G-mutants. Because damn if I ain't got shit for it. Go ahead and mix some of these while we're thinking about it. A uh, long barrel for my shotgun wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't scoff at that neither. I mean, the more hand grenades we save, the more we have to use against the super tyrant at the end. And considering how bad I am at fighting that thing normally, uh, first person's probably not much funner <laughs> having to deal with it. Oh, right, all right. Yeah, I'm really hoping we find an ink ribbon before we have to start dealing with Billy B and his nonsense in the next boss fight. The Rook Plot? Not a too uncannon spot for it to appear. 
When are they going to make smell o vision I'm sure some of you kids would be really into it. I was going to say, I can't remember if there's an item laying over here or not, but there it is. Once again, a very important item. King Plug. That movie Kingpin, I've never seen it. Is it actually about bowling? Or is it like The Big Lebowski where it's like not about bowling, but it's like totally could be about bowling, man? Your opinion? You gotta remind you that that's just your opinion. So that guy does get up if you mess with him. So we're not going to. Hey, guy. How you doing? Yeah, enough yet there, <laughs> Sunny Jim. That's what I thought. We're gonna get a print to strike on Fat Chubs. Yeah, just like Zach Fair had it to Com, or not Com, had it to uh, Nibbleheim. You tell the story about it at Com. But the actual event took place in the Able Line. We've got the preemptive strike materia is the joke I'm trying. I'm dragging myself towards. So I'll tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to take whatever item is occupying the Rook Plug slot. Because we have the cannon Rook Plug that we can put back in the, the place. Hopefully it doesn't cause any problems later. This guy's real tenacious for somebody who had one of his fucking knees blown off. All right, remember, don't take the, uh... Yeah, that was the pawn plug. My god. You got to have galaxy brain for this randomizer. Everything replaces things of a similar nature. It's like we've got the, uh, spin down dice from buying the Isaac Repentance. Why can that even go up? Are you taking a fucking barge through here? Was this a toll bridge? Unrealistic sewer planning. Son, that's what takes me out of the immersion of Resident Evil 2. Alright, we're in Hunk's starting area. Now, we don't really have anything to help us get past this first G mutant I just realized I don't want to oh we got this one flashbang we could let him grab us and uh, shove that in his mouth and try to get by in the invincibility frame so I'm going to equip it just in case we do get grabbed well ain't you a neat thing to find if I've already jumped down a ledge you can try to shoot him and like run past him when he's popping up. It's not the safest way to get around him. I'm just going to do this. I think we're on the other side of him, which is a good thing. Yeah, because it means we can climb up here and get the hell away from him. I was going to say, yeah, I don't think flashbangs stun them for a particularly long time, unfortunately. They don't seem real eye-dependent. Why even put the Umbrella logo on it if all this shit is supposed to be shady? I still don't understand how they could have built an underground laboratory like that without anyone noticing. I mean, they're like, oh yeah, we're building a new <laughs> Umbrella pharmacy here. It's just got a real big basement. Son, just remember this one is Suzaku Flame Blast telling you one of the abilities you can absorb into your mystic items in Saga Frontier. I finished Loot and Azalea's games in Saga Frontier Remastered, just to keep you all up to date. Once again, I could be playing that. It is Saturday. I could be playing Saga Frontier Remastered, but I'm quote-unquote working for y'all instead. 
Not that I'm fishing for sympathy. Comments, heaven forbid. Who, would I, who am I? To the man, such a frivolous luxury. All right, I want to know what one of these I have. Pawn, knight, bishop, queen, king. Uh, so all I'm missing is the rook. If I had the rook that I left back in that place, uh, we could technically already go in there and fight Billy B. So I can grab these without worrying about them then. Whoosh. Oh god, they're teasing the dog shit out of me with all this flamethrower fuel. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put the pieces in there that don't need to be carried around for puzzles. So, pawn, knight, bishop. So, should be pawn. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about you. Alright, so should be pawn. And then across from that should be knight, rook, bishop, I believe. This is my theory my working theory for now all right let's see what shit's waiting for us out here an ink ribbon wouldn't scoff at one i honestly need to take a break my ass is going numb my neck hurts from slightly leaning towards the microphone a little bit more just for y'all i'm not saying every ale and woe i have is because i care too much oh and try to give y'all too much I'm actually not trying to say that, in case anyone <laughs> is being off-put by these comments. It's just my quote-unquote jokes. Once again, to quote Cosgrove from Freakazoid, you're like, I thought you were doing one of your little skits. If we had meat, this is where it would go. Say, <laughs> they say pigs are smarter than bears, but they can't ride motorcycles. Okay. I heard they like put Freakazoid in an episode of Teen Titans Go. I don't know if it's bad or not, but I got like a guttural, unpleasant feeling when I <laughs> learned about that. And I don't know why. Take that as you will. Hell yeah, the T2. Craftsman T2. I believe this is the classic 2128. The three favorite Final Fantasies for those that think different. Because there are three very different Final Fantasies. Like you can argue one, three, five, even like six, seven, nine, and even to an extent ten are all more similar to each other than any of them are to Final Fantasies 2, 8, and 12. I'm telling you, whoever came out with those safe combinations, they knew what they were doing. They knew to also equate things <laughs> in uh, the form of Final Fantasy tiers. Uh, how long have I been recording? Okay, this is enough for like two episodes of this shit. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to save <laughs> and take a break for y'all. Remember, once again, I'm doing it for y'all. Just like the lady in the opening of The Omen. <laughs> 